Hi there, welcome back to the series of Seaborn tutorials. This is number three, and we're going to be talking about histograms on Seaborn. I'm going to run you through the theory behind histograms. What do they mean and what do we use them for? Then I'm going to show you how to make them in Seaborn. So let's have a look at the theory. Before I go deep into the explanation of histograms, I would really appreciate if you like my videos and subscribe to my channel. It does really help to grow my channel. Histograms form the foundation of a lot of decision making in data science. We make a lot of decisions on what model to make, what type of pre-processing to do, what type of data wrangling to do just by looking at the histogram of the data. What does really a histogram mean and what does it really show? To understand a histogram, let's think about a neighborhood. And you're trying to give some statistics and some data to the mayor, to the city hall about that block of let's say 500 houses. They're trying to understand what is the age range of people and how many people are in each age range. Well, one way would be to, um, to report this data in a bar graph, say there is one person who is 23 years old and eight months. There is one more person who is 24 years old and two months and so forth. Like literally making 500 bar charts, which is not really the smart way of doing that. The way you would probably do that, you would make buckets. You would say, I'm going to have every five year as one bucket. So zero to five years, six to 10 years, 10 to 15 years, and then choose people and put them in a respective buckets. So probably we would have uh, say 20 buckets from zero to 100 years old, and you would put people in those buckets. And then you would say, we have 10 people in the bucket of zero to five years old. So that means that there are 10 people living in this neighborhood that they are between the age of zero to five years old and so forth. This is the idea behind a histogram that shows you the graph of how many people live in each bucket or in statistical terms in each bin. You make bins and you put people in respective bins. So what you saw were the first two minutes from my Matplotlib tutorial on making histograms, which is relevant to today's work. If you have been watching my channel on Seaboard, I've been talking about this plot on the screen a couple of times. Seaboard has a flat structure. There are three main functions where there are more functions living underneath them. That means that Seaborn has made life easier by providing a bigger function on the top and then your ability to select the type of graph you want to make. In my previous two videos, we talked about rel plot, that's for relational data, and we talked about scatter plots and line plots. So starting today, I'm going to be talking about this plot, which is generally used for distributions. It is for us to understand the distributions of data, either in shape of a histogram, a KDE plot or a kernel density estimation plot, an ECDF plot, which is empirical cumulative distribution function plot, a rock plot, which I will have a separate video very soon. Let's get into it. Let's make a new Jupyter notebook. Like always, give it a proper name. This is for Seaborn number three import. Seaborn as SNS, just in case from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. If you have watched my pre previous videos, you will remember that Seaborn has some data sets free for us to use. I want to use the penguins data set from Seaborn. So let's make a variable and call it peng penguins. Use Seaborn load data set function and load penguins. Let's have a look at the penguins data set head. This is the top five rows of the data set. We have one, two, and three categorical variables. Categorical variables are either they are male or female, types of different penguins. However, we have four numerical variables that they are based on number. If I were to make a histogram of the body mass of various penguins, just trying to understand what is the distribution of penguin weight? Are they all around five kilograms? Are they all around 20 kilograms? Are they ones that are really heavy or are they ones that are really light? What does this data look like in terms of penguin weight or penguin body mass? So let's go ahead and say, I'm gonna use the hist plot function. The data is penguins and I want to look at body underscore mass underscore G. This is the histogram of penguin body mass. A lot of penguins are between 3,500 to 4,500 grams of body mass. However, there are ones that are quite large, over 6,000 grams, and there are a couple of them that are pretty light compared to the rest of the population. What I'm just trying to say is that if I go back to this graph, 
Now I used hist plot, but I told you that there is a parent function which is called the dist plot, which contains all these four types of plots. So how could I use the dist plot? That's pretty simple. Just use dist plot, and that will give you the same thing. It's a bit of a different look because it's got a facet grid in it. This function by default gives you a histogram. So if I make the kind hist it's not gonna really change. But if you look at the graph again, so there is his plot, there is KDE plot, which means if I change the kind to KDE, it will give me a KDE plot. But in this video, I'm just talking about his plot. So let's switch that back to his. I can say KDE equals true, which will give me a his plot plus a KDE plot. And this is the beauty of using a parent function rather than only using hist plot. Let's have a look at the distribution of Philipper length as well. So like before, SNS, this plot, I want the data of penguins, and I want the x to be what is this called Philipper length underscore millimeter, let's just copy that, it will give me the distribution of Philipper length, you can see that probably there are two different populations. there is a population that is centered around 190 millimeter. And there is a population that is centered around 220 millimeters. I would think that this is the difference between the male and the female species. In animals, the male population is larger compared to females. But let's verify that. What I will do, I'll say, I want the hue, which is the color, to be the sex. What I can see, male is in blue and female is in orange. You can... So maybe my assumption was not really correct. This is nothing to do with the male or the female. What if it is the different species of penguins that have different flipper length? Let's change this to species. And I think this is the correct presumption. So the Gen 2 species, the ones in green are sitting on the higher side of the spectrum. The chin strap are sitting in the middle and the Adelie are on the lower side. So I did Google their images and I did look at their comparisons and that is correct. The Gen 2 is the biggest of all the three. You can see that with you can see that with the disk plot on Seaborn, I can easily change the colors, change the visualization per my requirements. However, there is something also really nice that you can do. You can say I want to use the multiple stack type. So what this does instead of plotting them on top of each other, it does stack them over each other. Now here you can see that the blue species, which is which is the Adelie, is more visible. The orange is sitting here with a little bit here. And the Gen 2, which is the green one, is sitting on the higher end of spectrum. If you have seen my previous video on rel plot, you will remember that you can actually easily make a number of different graphs. Say, if you didn't want these three types of species to be plotted on top of each other in one graph, you can make three graphs. How to do it? Let's move the aesthetic part to the lower side. Let's get up, get rid of the multiple and just simply say, I want the column of species. What it will do, it will make three different histograms, one for Adelie, one for chin strap and one for Gen 2. And I didn't really need to do anything. Does it always come in columns? No, you can change it to rows. So if you set it to rows, you will get them stacked on top of each other from the top, Adelie, chin strap, and Gen 2 at the bottom with a legend here. But I, for this specific use case, I like the column more. Could I add a KDE to um, all the three, like kernel density estimation? Yeah, very simply, just say KDE equals true, and that will add a KDE for all the three, which is a little bit of code. Let's get into the nitty gritty of transforming the graph to your liking. One of the things that I talked in my matplotlib histogram video that I've got the link up the top right was the bins. Every one of these rectangles in color are called a bin. So that's essentially how you group your data. Bin size and the number of bins are probably the most important parameter in defining the shape of a histogram and understanding the distribution of some data. So if I were to say bins equals 10, which means that I want 10 bins, you will see that it doesn't really change because that's the default number. If I make it 100, you will see that the shape actually really changed. And I didn't really need 100 because I don't think I have 100 points, but I just, but you get the idea. So I guess I'm going to go with 30, which makes it just a bit nicer. I can see the distribution in more detail. So that was one. The other thing that you could do here is the bin width. So the bin width equals three. You can say, how much width do you want for the bin? So the larger you go, 
the smaller number of bins you will get. No matter what you say, I want 30 bins. If you set the bin width really high, that it doesn't fit 30 bins in it, it's not gonna show it to you. So you gotta make the call which one you're gonna be using. I'm gonna get rid of the bin width. And the other really cool thing from Seaborn is that you can actually say, I want a cumulative graph, which will give you that cumulative density function. What it does, it plots the ECDF of the data. I'm going to be talking about that in a separate video coming. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that to false. I don't want cumulative. The next parameter I'm going to be talking about is more on the aesthetic side of things. So if you set the fill to false, you will get rectangles that are not filled in. But if you set it to true, you will get bold solid rectangles. And last but not least is the log scale. I want the values to be in the log scale. And if you set log scale, equals true, you will have the log scale on the x axis with just one parameter. You might ask, Amir, you told us how to make horizontal bar charts or horizontal histograms in Matplotlib. How do we do it here? Well, that's pretty easy. Instead of saying that x equals flipper length, just say I want y to be flipper length. What it does, it will plot the histograms across the y axis. Okay, I'm gonna return it back to x. Let me get rid of these three that I'm not really using. I'm gonna move the bins to the lower line so that I have enough space. This is one dimensional hist plot. We want to, to look at the distribution of the penguin's body mass versus their flipper length. Can I have a two dimensional hist plot? Of course you can. Let's go ahead and make a new plot. Say SNS dot, I want a hist plot for data penguins. I want the x to be body underscore mass underscore g, the y to be flipper length, if I can get it right, in millimeter, big size of seven and seven. What I have here is a two dimensional histogram that I have the body mass on the x axis and I have the flipper length in millimeters on the y axis. If I give it a hue of sex, you will see that the male community, which is the blue one, is sitting on the higher end of body mass and the flipper length. Female population is sitting just a bit lower. If I change the color by species, because that was really helpful in the previous one, you can see that the Gen 2 are sitting in the higher body mass flipper length and the chin strap and the Adelie are late sitting on the lower side. This is also really helpful because we're not only looking at the distribution of body mass, but we are simultaneously looking at body mass versus flipper length. And could I change the colors? Of course, if I change the palette to Viridis, for example, that will give me the Viridis. If I change it to say Turbo, it will give me the Turbo color palette. What I want you to take away from this video is that you can use this plot to work with histograms, cumulative distribution functions, kernel density estimations, and so forth. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel and contribute to the growth of my channel as well. Thank you.